Well, Tim, it's going to be one of those days. Yeah. Midwest, we're southwest. Going, yeah, way out west now. We're going out to the avocado capital of the world. Avocado. Say, avocados. Yes. Uh, this, this, this area also has the most farms in one county in the United States. The most farms. What, what, what? Are, we, what are we talking about? Here? Illinois. We're talking about San Diego. There's, San Diego's in California, sir. Yes, I know. It is. It remains. That cannot be a statistic. Are you serious? Yes. Really? 7,000 farms out in San Diego County. Well, sitting to my left is young Tim Bona, fun facts of farming. And he also is a a noted uh, writer for Links and Libations in terms of the world of golf and libations. But a golf background that's second to almost nobody. And myself sitting to his right is Randy Weckerly. And I don't know what I do here yet, but I do it a lot. You'll figure it out at some point. And on the line, we have out in San Diego, um, probably not on a carrier, but land-based, young Casey Miles, who, uh, you know, in our short little interview here just shortly, uh, Tim, yes, uh, we learned a lot in 30 seconds. Anyway, Casey, we are really fortunate to have you coming online today. Welcome. Thank you. My pleasure to be here with you. Hey, Casey, San Diego Craft Distillers, some say, some say, oh, a lot of their success, or at least a good portion, is to beer. Is this true? (laughs) (laughs) Not at all. Not at all. Uh, What? San Diego is a beer. San Diego is definitely a craft beer county, which makes it duly difficult for the spirits to get a break because everybody drinks beer. It's a craft mania out there, and you guys came in, and some say modeled it after the San Diego's Brewers Guild, but you're off and running, guy. Yeah, there, there are some things we do um, take a page out of their book for, like um, our bylaws and our guilds and uh, some you know, festival and event planning. Uh, the craft breweries have definitely pioneered uh, quite the path down here, and we are able to cherry-pick some parts, but there are also other parts that they made it a beer market, so it's it's kind of hard to break through on craft Well, beer. there are some obvious differences. We, you know, anybody can drink a lot of beer, but you're not going to drink <laughs> too, <laughs> too many of these great spirits they're putting together up there. We're going to sip them, uh, but beer remains popular, 40% of the nation's sales, uh, but it's slipping, but up come the spirits. They are up, uh, what, 5 or 6% last year, up to almost 40%. And wine uh, wines out there in third at about eighteen uh, percent. So you're coming on. Yeah, we see uh, um, uh, some some adoption is starting to be uh, evident in the last probably eighteen months, where people are kind of getting away from the craft beers and uh, looking at more craft spirits. We're definitely seeing an uptick. Well, you definitely have a great uh, great spot there in Southern uh, California, and with all the things that we've read and heard about with the fires and the rain and all that, uh, are we guys? Involved in that, or are you far enough, farther enough south that it really didn't affect you? Or how did how how do all the dynamics of California affect you down in San Diego? Uh, well, we are pretty far south uh, of the fire, so we. Well, I mean, we'll see the smoke in the air, maybe a, a red horizon, but other than that, it's about as close as it gets. Uh, a couple years back, we did have a fire close to our distillery in San Marcos that was uh, on the nearby hillside. Um, it, it never got to us. So, so far, none of our distilleries, um, save one, there was a small distillery down in Spring Valley that had a fire of its own uh, internally from bad wiring on a, on a fan, a cheap fan that was caught fire at night. But it was really impressive how almost every distillery uh, that instantly was sending emails to them saying, you know, we can put your barrels up here. Uh, do you need a kettle? Do you need time? Uh, do you, where, you know, uh, everybody was throwing resources at them. So it was really great to see uh, how, how how tight this community is. Well, that that's, I think, one of the things you were saying is that because of where you're located and, and the closeness that you have, um, you know, sometimes you don't find that in a lot of the different organizations that we visit. Most generally we do, but uh, you mentioned that, number one, and I think that's great when you're, uh, you know, one of the leaders of, of the organization. And we're visiting with Casey Miles of San Diego Distillers Guild this morning, Young Tim. Yeah, so collaboration, right, uh Right? A collaboration is huge out there, Casey. Absolutely. We kind of live by, there's an anonymous quote that says, if you want to improve incrementally, then compete. If you want to improve exponentially, then collaborate. So we've done everything from hosting classes at the un- local university where all the distillery owners come in and do an hour on what they do best. And we sold tickets to the general public for anyone looking to get into this industry. I think that's kind of maybe not a market first, but it's a great display of all the owners were out there uh, talking about, the things that they're great at. 
And you've got a big wine and spirits conference coming up, and you've got a little surprise for your connoisseurs <laughs> out there, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So um, as with most craft distillers, we do focus on product quality, grain to glass, that kind of thing. Uh, however, we've kind of taken uh, uh, another business model in as well, and we're looking at, um, well, we're, we're, we're going to be launching a new brand at the Wine and Spirits of America Wholesalers Conference at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas here at the end of April. And uh, there's this big controversial debate out there over, you know, American politics. So yes. we looked at that and said, well, how can craft spirits benefit from this craze sweeping the nation? So we we trademarked uh, the words America first uh, in this industry, uh, deviate it um, to kind of keep this, this whole thing uh, as a separate entity, and we'll be launching America first vodka and America first whiskey at, at the conference. And it's the, uh, more of a satire brand. It's really tongue-in-cheek. You know, I mean, the label's got... <laughs> Sharks with lasers on their heads and right. monster trucks and tanks and <laughs> it's got. Uh, we're, we're trying to get. Uh, we're trying to get uh, Donald Trump to agree to let us put his head on a bodybuilder. <laughs> that's kind of on the cover of it. But he's he he he's probably the type of business person that might you know sue. He might go along with using that, his yeah. likeness, or he might <laughs> like it. Who knows? We we wrote him. We haven't heard anything back. Uh, uh, so in the interim, we're using uh, an American Eagle head that has a, a red and white bandana on, and uh, it. You know, if you read that we parked a couple domains where it says things like America First Vodka sets the bar high, then grabs the bar and does a hundred one arm pull ups. You know, it's, <laughs> it's tough like America First Whiskey, but gentle for your lady friends. You there know, you stuff go. like that. It's so yeah. silly. Well, it's that's so a, silly. Well, that's what it's, it's 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 memorable. It's entertaining. It's creative. I think you're onto something there. Well, one yeah, of the things yeah. that uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Keith. Go ahead. No, oh, I was just gonna say in. This was really a rediscovery of the value of branding because I think a lot of craft distillers really focus their entire message on how they don't cut any corners, use the best products, uh, source from around them, things like that. Uh, but that really, uh, that's not really piggybacking on any trends that are very powerful out there. And, and it doesn't have to be politics. It could be anything. There's, there's tons of viral conversations throughout YouTube and Facebook and things like that. So what we looked at was how many hits do these hashtags get? And America First, just that hashtag, has seen 6.5 million impressions already. Oh, it averages 150,000 a week with 500,000 engagements. Oh, so all we have to do is jump in the middle of that stream. And I recommend that for other craft distilleries out there. Look at brand as a strategic tool. Don't look at it as just an expression of what you're doing because it can be the most powerful vehicle uh, to move your product. And, and do it in a genuine way. Do it in an honest right. way. You know, uh, like we're not we're not trying to lie about what this brand is. You know, we're we're, we're getting out there and using um, attention that is already in place in order to promote and uh, build this craft spirits environment. See, he's collaborating. And that is Casey <laughs> Miles. Never stops collaborating. Hashtag Casey Miles. <laughs> hashtag San Diego Distillers Guild. Yeah. And at Casey Miles and all yeah. that. Well, we're going to learn from young Casey with our Lance Absolutely. and Libations magazine. And uh, our young uh, uh, innovator in our world in terms of uh, social media just, just walked in the room. Mm-hmm. And he will be in touch with you to learn everything you're doing out there. We're going to... We just really, really have a lot to learn. Yeah, you have really struck a, a nerve with me, and a, not a nerve, but man, I'll tell you yeah. what, what, what positive uh, things he's doing out there. That's great. What other great ideas do you have that you would like to share? <laughs> and give away. Give away. You know, and he, says away. He, he loves open ended questions. We'll have another interview soon, Casey. Right. Thanks yeah. so much for joining us. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll be in uh, touch. That was Casey Miles with the San Diego Distillers Guild. And uh, Randy, May 20, 29th out in San Diego. Tony Hawk Day. Tony Hawk Day. Tony Hawk Day how, San Diego. How, no kidding. Do they have any golf courses in San Diego? Uh, after skateboarding, we may go out and, you know. You're going to go skateboarding? No, I don't. No, no. I, I it's skateboarded. not happening. I li- the true story, skateboarded mm-hmm. six inches. Yes. And almost lost my track scholarship because of it. Mm-hmm. I, went, I went horizontal. Almost. And, yeah. Yeah. Almost was, pulled a Rory McIlroy there, you know. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to pull a Rory McIlroy yeah. next week. <laughs> You know, they did not send me my invitation again for the, the 40, Masters. 45th year in a row. Yeah. But we will have next year. Art Strickland, Feet right, in the Ground. Week. Links and Libations Magazine Man. is going to come live from the Masters next week. Tiger's coming back. Absolutely. Rory's going to be there. The golden moment for golf next week, final group, mm-hmm. Tiger, Phil. There you go. 
That'd be that'd be good for speaking of numbers. That'd be good for ratings, huh? Worldwide. Anyway, yes. thank you, Tim. Thank you, Casey. And we are going to be in touch with that young man. Yes. And we'll be back with distilleries, breweries, wineries of the world. And Tim Bonus at my left. And thank you out there, Casey Miles.